Good evening to you as well. We are going to go live, ladies and gentlemen. Here Derek. we go. And hey, get Martin. that one off. Boom. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sigler in Place. We've been gone for a minute, but we're back. We will also be gone next week for Thanksgiving, but we'll tell you about that after the fact. Uh, we have a uh, great show for you today. We have you a guys, guest. So we have fun. a huge crypt update for you. Uh, we've got some junkie pets and junkie picks, of course, and then we've got questions. But the majority of the show, uh, at least a half hour, will be dedicated to our guest. We're going to get to that. But before we get to that, of course, I don't know what's going on. The the All you junkies are signing up for the SMS text messaging by leaps and droves. Is that a phrase? Leaps and droves? Uh, no, leap. Well, sure it is. Now it oh. is. It's leaps and bounds now, you guys. I got to get but your camera. Either way. So we um, uh, we are going to miss next week, we mentioned. We are going to uh, do the rest of the day. Also, if you sent in today, if you sent photos, they'll be in two weeks we're going to air them because uh, we do the scripts on Tuesday. And hey, today we just happen to have a handful of folks send us stuff in, which is going to be super fun for the FDO's birthday cast. Um, but uh, uh, other than that, we, uh, we've we got a couple for today and then we've got a bunch for two weeks from now and uh, that is gonna be fun. Uh, and then I think the other thing is you guys know on the first Saturday of every month, uh, our good friend who I just mentioned, Steve Rickyberg, does hosts a, um, a, a several hour junkie happy hour and he's online for a big span of time so that everybody around the world can join. You don't have to stay the whole time. You can jump in and out. This is All the Christmas party. This is sort of a Christmas party version of it on December 3rd. Yeah, so, so get your eggnog I'm and definitely going to be there for sure. I know I said that last time, and then I had to go help my folks get, for, with something. But is eggnog the most caloric, boozy drink? I don't know. Like, Brandy Alexanders are really yeah. up there. Mudslides are really up there. But oh, it's among slides. them. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, but we will be there. Uh, I will be there for a goodly amount of time. Scott normally has music band practice that day, but he, uh, since it's, isn't it's Christmas, maybe we can get him to stop by, say hello. Maybe. Maybe we can do that. And then, of course, uh, if you're not signed up for the newsletter, sign up for the newsletter. God damn it. How many oh, times do I tell and you especially, people? I mean, I How many know times do I tell you guys, people this? God damn it. I know all you guys are signed up for the newsletter, but here's your, here's your warning. We're about to shift to a new uh, site. Uh, a new platform and you want to be the first people to know how to sign up first so. in your neighborhood kid you yeah. want to be it you want to be cool and you want to be the first around to have the great stuff all right that uh that about covers it we're gonna we got a minute or two a couple, so, couple uh, minutes i do want to say you guys uh we're with jared jared is in the chat room on twitch so not everybody can see it on facebook and he says today is the two-year anniversary of my late wife trish's surgery slash cancer diagnosis confirmation and in her honor uh jared and also me it's a great it's a great honor uh please get any abnormal conditions checked and do all your monthly check-ins especially if you're a woman you can do your breast exams at home i know men can do a, uh, some sort of downstairs business check all that stuff it's really ball important it's ball, yeah, it's ball I, yeah, I didn't know what to say and I, sometimes, got a little, I got a little nervous right sometimes now. <laughs> you got to fumble around down there for a minute make sure everything's you know everything's jake and there are many uh there are many actual YouTube videos <laughs> on this. Little... I'm not talking about Pornhub videos, but you freaks. It's, Some it, YouTube videos but to teach you how to like, check important. the jumblies. And especially if you're roughly, you know, a full-grown, a full-blown adult there, like, do the work. Because early detection makes all the difference in the world. And if you're approaching 50, get your uh, shingle shots and schedule your colonoscopy. Do it. Save the people who love you from having to also, miss you. Have some Metamucil. Get some x lax What other old people things can we say at this point? I don't know. We're done. No? We're, We're done. done. But uh, Great. but we have. We are about to go full rock. So it's all <laughs> well, good. Technically, <laughs> technically although full I have metal. I have led an entire lifetime of being metal, this will be the most metal that this show has ever ever been. Good for you guys. Everybody's saying right. that they're getting checked out. Uh, Sean Dyer says there's absolutely a blood test if you're younger than 50. If you have a history of cancer in your family, do that. Yes, do that. Do All that, right. do that. All right, we're going to go a little early because I can see our guest is out there. I'm going to He's go ready and, and he's, he's laughing unmute. at us. You can unmute. <laughs> And uh, ladies and gentlemen, our guest today, we got to switch over to the big cam, is Matthew Medney. He is the CEO at Heavy Metal Magazine. And there's a lot more going on than just the magazine. And we're going to get to all of that in just a second. He's also a science fiction author. And he's going to tell us about a couple of his books, a couple of his products. Ladies and gentlemen and the jury, let's go and say hi to Mr. Matthew Medney. Hello, sir. What's up, guys? How howdy, you doing? howdy. We're doing, we're doing great, as you can see. Our highly polished, intricately technological <laughs> cast is off to a just flying start. It's but we, we we turn it off and turn it back on, and what do you know? That that shit actually worked. Yep. That's. I mean, that is how we fix technology, right? Like that's how they said in the '90s in the movies, you just kick the computer and something mm. works. Yep. 
I kicked the the leg of the desk just in case when we were restarting. <laughs> you really have to like um, you have to uh, cure all possibilities. <laughs> you have to, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, tell us about your position at Heavy Metal, and we'll get to your books in just a second. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as, as Scott said, I'm CEO of Heavy Metal, uh, one of the partners as well. I took over the brand in 2019 at the tail end of it. It was, uh, you know, really exciting to be given this chance as a young CEO to run such a uh, illustrious magazine that, you know, they had to give me COVID. To work through so it was, <laughs> it, was, it was really a plus uh you know and before uh heavy metal uh i started and still own and operate a custom comics company called hero projects where we've you know made comic books for everyone from floyd mayweather to chance the rapper and post malone which has been like a ton of fun there so you know heavy metal has sort of been the last you know three years of my life and figuring out how to bring as I like to say, uh, you know, the ranger from the north back to the throne of men in Minas Tirith is really how I see heavy metal and where it was and, and where it can be. Yeah. And this is a very hey, historically Martha. significant uh, publication in the horror and sci-fi area. Some of our audience may have never heard of it. They might be very I mean, young. I think everybody, oh, okay, oh, I, I think I think every, all the 80s and 90s kids probably have heard of it, if only from the movie Heavy Metal, which was yeah. crazy and awesome. Super awesome. It is and, and an interesting... Oh, I was just saying, if you haven't heard of it, then, you know, look no further than uh, James Gunn's movies or Taika Waititi's or Guillermo del Toro's, Ridley Scott's. All of those movies are inspired by the magazine. I mean, you know, we'll get into it, but, you know, Alien was actually written by a staff writer of Heavy Metal at the time, Dan O'Bannon. And mm -hmm. we actually published uh, the Alien graphic novel as Ridley was making the movie. So, you know, you might not know the name, but you know the products. Yeah. And enjoy the product. Yes. All right. Cool. So now let's uh, let's we've got a lot to cover here, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let's talk about uh, Beyond Kuiper. That is a book that is out now, and then we're going to talk about another book that's going to be out in a minute. Yeah. So you know, Beyond Kuiper um, is a hard science fiction uh, story where the Kuiper Belt a ring of asteroids around our solar system, and in real life, scientists, you know, everyone from Bill Nye to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, to my buddy Chris Matman, who's the uh, uh, chief technology and innovation officer at NASA Jet Propulsion Lab, talks about the Kuiper Belt as this um, first line of defense for Earth, mm -hmm. where asteroids and protoplanets and cosmic debris come hurling towards us to create extinction level events. And, you know, when they go through the Kuiper Belt, they kind of get reduced in size and then the, the threats sort of get eaten up by the gravity of Ma of uh, uh, Saturn and Jupiter. But in Kuiper, the Kuiper, uh, but in the book Beyond Kuiper, the Kuiper Belt is a military installation by the Galactic Star Alliance used to quarantine civilizations that are too hostile to interact with the rest of the galaxy. And obviously us humans are a little too hostile. Oh, um, we're, we're, what we, we're what we like to call a terraform hungry planet. Uh, so our species would be too predicated on wanting to push our culture on the Galactic Star Alliance rather than receive culture from the various uh, planets that are within the Alliance. Okay. And a, a catastrophe happens uh, at the beginning of the book, and the human says it has to be aliens, and he gets ridiculed out of the scientific community, and we follow his journey. Uh, his sort of hero's journey as he tries to prove his case that aliens are real while we flip the narrative and look at the terrorist attack on earth and who got through the quarantine zone okay. and how did this happen and those two stories kind of come to a head and this is uh book one of a series is that right book one of six book one of six nice. okay Must book be... two should be coming out next summer book two coming out next summer as uh, someone who might have some news about a book one later, I'm, I'm sure you're happy you got the book one done. And that's and, such a – sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Uh, that's such a fun idea because it's such a tiny little bit of stuff that I know about the Kuiper Belt. But what I know is that, you know, the distance between objects in the Kuiper Belt is vast to me, but not at all vast to something coming towards us. And that exactly. is a concept that I, like – I, I get, but I don't get. Like I get it, but I don't get it. And I and I love that. That's kind of where you sit, seat your story for that reason. Hundred percent. 
you know, you, you'll be able to maybe maneuver through the Kuiper Belt in a nice spaceship, but, you know, a hurling ball of uh, space rock is going to get uh, 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 divided up into smaller rocks that then become less uh, potent. Got it. Got it. And then, uh, and then now we have another series of years, and this is uh, part of why we wanted you on today. This is a new thing coming out. This is Above the Ground. And is, yes. this, uh, is this out now? So we did a staggered release with this. So the Kindle book, uh, the ebook came out yesterday. Um, and, you know, shout out to everyone that's already purchased it and bought it because it uh, charted as uh, the number two Kindle book uh, yesterday for post-apocalyptic uh, stories. Kick ass, man. Cool. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. So that was that was pretty uh, epic to see. And uh, the, the paperback comes out in two weeks. And then the audio book comes out as the beginning of January. Okay. Okay. And to dip into the publishing world for a second, the staggered start is, is that a choice or due to the name? Cause sometimes we have a staggered start cause it's just hard to get things to line up. Is that something you guys do on purpose or is that uh, just the way the, the ball rolls downhill? So we did day and date for Kuiper for the first book two years ago. Okay. And it was great. And it was a big moment. And I, I didn't necessarily see all three products getting the love that I thought they should. Okay. And this is my second novel release. I've released a ton of graphic novels in the interim, but I wanted to try a different method and just, and just sort of AB test it and see if I gave each uh, iteration its own day, if that had any different impact on the story. Great. Yeah. I can't wait to see, let us know what happens with that. I'd like to know the results. You and and uh, and we are like minded that way. We, I, you know, one of the benefits, and there are a few, but there are also a lot of, of uh, pitfalls being a tiny, tiny, <laughs> tiny, tiny publisher, so to speak, is you get to try stuff like that. Yeah. Totally. I think I think that is what's also made heavy metal so great over the years is the idea of trying something and it failing is actually part of its ethos, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Heavy metal is about, you know, being on the fringe and on the bleeding edge of science fiction, fantasy, and horror. And when you're on the bleeding edge of something, whether you're small or big, and, and normally you're on the bleeding edge when you're smaller, mm -hmm. because to be on the bleeding edge when you're bigger is really risky. Yeah. Um, you get to try things. And if they fail, that's part of being on the bleeding edge. That's part of that ethos. Mm hmm yeah, I hadn't thought about it that way, but that's for sure a totally metal way to do things. We can get a little closer. Oh, sorry. Or as we like to say, uh, break shit and fix it. And that's the, <laughs> basically yeah, how our entire business it. works, just break stuff. <laughs> I agree. If you don't break stuff, then you're not trying. Not exactly. <laughs> now, tell us a little bit about Above the Ground. So Above the Ground, um, you know, is, is I, I really wanted to focus on a, a post-apocalyptic story based on Earth, because Kuiper is so cosmic and so out there in its in its concept. It is, you know, it's my baby, and I love Kuiper to death, but it is really designed for, like, the engineer okay. to love and read. Okay. Um, above the Ground is a little bit more, you know, genre-friendly. It's a little bit less technical, but it's as, sci it's as science heavy without the... But in Kuiper, we, we created our own units of measure, and actually depending on who's talking we'll talk in the unit of measure that they created okay very deep that way above the ground's a little bit easier to read and we follow a school teacher and her botanist husband in this post-apocalyptic world he created something called apples which stands for advanced plant life systems effectively quantum quantum botany okay and when you have quantum botany in a paradigm that just had a nuclear winter, you become the most important person on the planet mm -hmm. because you can create crops in dead soil, right? So we follow him getting, you know, attacked and trying to survive from various um, forces that are trying to capture him and, and effectively make him work for them. And it has a little Book of Eli vibe in that sort of okay. badland. Mm -hmm. uh, situation and then you know i don't want to give up the uh the big twist that happens about a third of the way through but i will say there's a whole aspect of this that you don't even see coming and that's a really fun part of it is um there's a certain story that'll let people realize what it is when they read it that i was really inspired by how it moved culture the marvel property and how it moved culture and how it 
sh shed light on a group of people and how they um how their culture really is and i wanted to do that for a uh a discipline of of people that i thought um needed needed that hero needed need that perspective so we, we kind of do that halfway through and I, I i had the the pleasure of writing above the ground with my buddy bob greenberger who's like the the the, the star trek like lore master okay so back in the day he you know wrote most of the backstory lore for the the book series that that are now canon for star trek that that sounds pretty interesting. I do know the spoiler because you guys, he told me earlier. Because sometimes this is what authors do, just to piss off readers. I don't know the Share a little spoiler here and there, and then we're in the know. And you're not. <laughs> All right, um, that's about the ground, and and that uh, re review the release schedule yeah, again, please. So you can get the Kindle. You can get the Kindle now if you want the hard copy. It's December thirteenth. You can pre-order it now. It'll start shipping uh, right before Christmas, cool. and then the audio book will be coming out uh, January twentieth. Great. Right. That sounds great. Now, let's switch back over to the, watch the segue. You ready for this? Okay. This is how professional professional journalists Don't do it. Don't tell me. Show it. Matthew, we've been talking about Above the Ground, but there's a couple of heavy metal publications that are coming out. And see, then I'll go to heavy metal after that. So that's how that works. It's, cre it's very clever. Spoiler it's very clever. alert. Uh, tell us about Fifth Force. Is a graphic novel, I believe, that is coming out or is out now? It, it, it just came out uh, two weeks ago. I, I wrote that one as well with my buddy Morgan, and we had the pleasure of writing it with our uh, friend Catherine Lubier, who is a former diplomat from Canada. Uh, she worked with the president of Canada and the premier of Quebec, and she has been you know, an advocate for clean energy and climate change and, and, and educating on that for some time now. And we met through actually one of the one of my partners in heavy metal. Her and him have been friends for a while, and we had this idea to create a sci-fi thriller that could be educational. Um, you know, get the younger generation to understand the pros and cons of clean energy and the speed of which to bring the clean energy in. Because I think you know, for those listening that follow world politics, mm -hmm. you know, too much clean energy too fast is is the issue with what's happening in Europe right now in the the um, natural gas crunch that's happening for winter, right? So being able to contemplate the proper way of fixing the climate for longevity rather than gut knee-jerk reactions to just fulfill a political um, posture is sort of what she wanted to help tell in like a crazy time-traveling extravaganza. <laughs> There's a lot going on. So a, a, a solid environmental message wrapped up in a gordita shell of adventure i think is Ooh, what we're gordita looking. shell of yeah, adventure i like that that's good that's a good one maybe and i then, should go get some a gordita uh, taco yeah we we uh, we get them every time we go on our trip to la they stop at taco bell you it's a it's a rite them. of passage i get them they're great <laughs> and then let's see we've got then remnant and this is a pretty cool cover here uh very very kind of a world war ii soviet-esque cover tell us about this one yeah, I mean, you got the time, you got the timeline totally right. It's a, um, you know, we call it a futuristic noir mm -hmm. um, story. And, you know, it takes place 400 years from now. But in the timeline of Remnant, 200 years from now, the banking system totally imploded. And everybody decided that they want to go back to a more refined way of living. And the Roaring Twenties attire was sort of the... The, the the garm of choice okay so we have these robots and we have this these hover cars but it's all in these sort of roaring 20s garm um which is pretty fun and we follow this uh journalist abel kane who sees a murder <laughs> abel kane i love it <laughs> nicely Thank you. done. i love that you caught that um so we we, he, he, we follow this journalist who's writing his next uh book he's following the senator senator palmer as he's about to announce his candidacy for the president and he's writing the autobiography and as he's sort of investigating he stumbles upon the senator you know having an affair and as he's you know capturing this and seeing the journalism he sees you know in the alley that he's sort of um staked out in that a, a a murder is happening and as he's watching this murder happen he realizes that the person murdered is a robot 
And the robots at this time are very much looking like robots. But this robot looked like a human. Mm -hmm. And it had a metal metal sheath under their skin. And that was outlawed 95 years ago. Okay. And that kind of opened the rabbit hole. And he sort of steps in and starts wondering if he might be the last human left. And is there a robotic takeover? And how far down does the rabbit hole go? And where does the cookie crumble? And he sort of goes down this crazy path. And we follow him as he, you know, goes from autobiographical journalist to investigative reporter. Are there some shades of uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers in this, maybe? There's totally. Okay, Totally cool. shades of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Totally shades of um, Boardwalk Empire from the, 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 the paradigm of how the characters interact with each other. Okay. Um, all with this sort of you know, familiarity that has a really, another really fun twist at the end. So I want to take a minute um, because you can't see the chat room. I want to let you know, we've gotten a handful of comments multiple times. Everybody, a lot of people just like Scott love this art, especially for Remnant, but we've had a lot of great comments on the cover art uh, of all of your novels or, or all of the novels that we've showed the cover art for. And also several folks who uh, are good friend, what, what do you call Mike Natazzi? Uh, big, big nasty, nasty. Yeah. yeah uh he has just got his copy this he's a monthly subscriber and just got heavy metal and uh tracy shank said um that he's been enjoying heavy metal forever and is so excited for this podcast so i just wanted to let you know since you can't yeah. see this right now and a couple questions and it's really lovely that. I also I also heard earlier you were uh, mentioning a guy named Sean Dyer who's a close friend. So shout out oh, to Sean. Fabulous. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> small world, small world. A couple of people asking where they can get uh, Remnant and Fifth Force. Yeah, so um, get it on Amazon, get it at Barnes & Noble, mm -hmm. get it at heavymetal.com, um, you know, wherever you might um, choose to shop. Um, they should be there. Uh, Barnes & Noble carries them. Some targets carry them. Check online first. Wow, see that's great. If it is if it is in your uh, town, but as a fail safe, you can always go to heavymetal.com and purchase it directly from us. Yeah. Speaking of a segue. Yeah. Speaking of a <laughs> high five. See, when she explains it, it's also funnier too. We explain a lot of, funny we explain a lot of jokes to each other in this household. So let's now <laughs> get back to the super cool stuff you're doing with heavy metal. Uh, maybe a really a quick overview of, of when you came on board and the changes you've been trying to make. And then, because I'm old, dude. I, you know, you've talked to me. I'm old. I don't know what this blockchain magazine stuff is. So let's let's go. Let's start out with how you started out there and then move into your entrepreneurial vision for this in, this huge brand. Yeah. So, I mean, when I took it over, you know, effectively 2020 at the beginning, the, the idea was always that I had taken over a company that was Heavy Metal Magazine. And I had a singular vision of creating heavy metal entertainment. I see heavy metal as as a form of Disney, as adult Disney that can have a bunch of different te tentacles, have theme parks, have have movies, and all of that fun stuff. So for the last three years, our you know vision has been to make the magazine monthly again, which we had done about a year and a half ago. Okay. Um, and my beard no longer is fully um, barbecue color. It is now white and barbecue uh, for making it a monthly magazine, which, you know, for those barbecue listening, color. it is 144 pages of comic every month. So I'm putting out a graphic novel monthly, Oof, um, wow. which is which is very, very intense. Um, and then as we've done that, we've brought in, you know, some critical new partners. A guy named Tommy Coriel is our head of studio. Uh, and has been, you know, spearheading our off the page and onto the screen initiatives. Uh, and we've been, you know, setting up publishing partnerships uh, with certain companies, such as a, a, a really innovative company called Whatnot. Uh, Whatnot is a live streaming platform. Think of it as like QVC before cool shit. And uh, <laughs> you can do live streaming on it and sell your books right there. Honestly, you guys should like look into live streaming on Whatnot and selling books live. Um, it's pretty cool. And what a and great name for Whatnot is such a great name for this, a for this. Yeah. What so, a great so we name. announced a partnership with them a month ago at New York Comic Con. And, you know, starting with our December issue, they take uh, control of the back half of publishing. Heavy Metal and, and me and our team will have full creative control. But once we're finished with the putting together the book, 
they are now responsible for the printing, the shipping, the marketing, the distribution, the solicitation, and and bringing it to their fa fans and their younger generations. And it's a really great partnership that we've been able to forge with them that allows Heavy Metal to really just focus on what we do great, which is creative. You know, for Heavy Metal fans here that have been on, you know that we've had some shipping issues over the last year. You know, we've been apologizing for it, but we have put steps in place to make sure that we identify what we're great at and what we're not so great at. And now we've brought in great partners for those things. Mm -hmm. That's been really exciting. Quick question from the chat room from David Lamb as a huge fan of the heavy metal movie. Any plans to make any more such movies with all the wonderful animation and CGI now available? Hell yeah. <laughs> um, hell yeah. So, you know, we, if, if you, um, you know, if you just Google uh, heavy metal TV film Forbes, Forbes covered an amazing piece for us on uh, what we're doing on the TV film side. We put together a sizzle reel for it that you can find there. Oh you know, it's goodness. half original filmed uh, content that we made, half rip reel. Uh, it's really, really fun. That is, you know, in development right now. We're mm -hmm. planning to do a lot of new projects, both animated and live action. That's wonderful. Everybody's very, cool. very, very thrilled to hear that. And now finally, Let's get to this uh, this black magic voodoo stuff called the blockchain. What the yes. hell? What the hell, Matthew? What's going on? You know, the, the easiest way for me to explain the blockchain external of what we're using it for, for <clears> anyone <throat> that just wants a quick crash course, is when homes originally were built thousands of years ago, they didn't build them with doors. They just built houses. And at some point, people started getting things stolen. People started getting injured. People started doing illicit acts. And other people were like, Let's throw a roof and a door on those homes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that parable is really what the blockchain is for the Internet. It is the roofs and the doors to the Internet. It's just allowing security and transparency so that nobody can be lied to and nobody can get scammed on the blockchain, which is not to say that companies are not trying to do that. People that are following the news see what has been happening this last week with FTX. That's really unfortunate, but mm -hmm. that is not the blockchain itself being compromised. That is a effectively a Web2 you know, company masking itself and creating dire okay. concern. Uh, if you own crypto, just as a, 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 a warning, you should probably move all of your crypto onto what's called a ledger. And then it is truly just your crypto and the blockchain. A ledger is a um, an off uh, um, exchange place to hold all of your assets. And how, um, how does how does the blockchain factor into heavy metal? Let's let's yeah. talk about that. Yes, sorry, I, I went off on a tangent. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. um, it happens. I'm very I'm very passionate about the blockchain because I think it is a um, a future for how the internet can interact with with each other. Um, you know what what. I've always realized with digital publishing uh, when it comes to comic books is that you actually don't own any of the books that you purchase. You pay full price on Comixology for a book. You pay full price on Apple Books, all these places. Mm -hmm. But the books themselves are actually on a server that's owned by Apple or Amazon, et cetera. So in theory, if, if, if either company decided to sunset those those services, there would be no place for you to own the digital assets that you had purchased because you actually are leasing them even by the terms and conditions that you pay for them on those platforms. Okay. We, what we saw as a opportunity with the way that we could leverage the blockchain is to create a service that allows you to take those digital assets, your comic books, and take them off of a main server, put them in your own digital wallet on the blockchain. We partnered with a company called MetaMask. It's one of the blockchain enabled wallets. And that means that when your comic book or your magazine is in your personal MetaMask on the blockchain through Metal Plus, if Heavy Metal ever goes out of business, if we ever sunset Heavy Metal, Metal Plus in the blockchain, your book is still yours no matter what. Okay. Forever. And I think that is the real piece of using this technology that allows you to own it. And then someone might say, well, what if you just like sent me a PDF to download? Sure, but then that will have zero value to you. When it's on the blockchain, you can see how many we released. 
If we say that we only release a thousand, you can verify that on the blockchain and you'll have one of a thousand that are verified. And that digital asset will keep its intrinsic value because it's limited to that quantity that's been verified by the blockchain, which effectively is your digital certificate of authenticity. And, you know, are there other publishers that are looking into this or do you feel you're on the cutting edge of this with, with putting out a magazine? I definitely think we're on the cutting edge. There's a ton of uh, Web3, which is what you know people use to refer to blockchain technology that's been, you know, figuring out how to do books and other medias uh, on the blockchain because it is also a interesting way to crowdfund mm -hmm. um, that allows people to have actually interest in the project. But right? Kickstarter, you have to give um, rewards. But if you created a NFT project with fractionalization, people could actually own a part of that story with you. So there's a lot, and we, we could spend way too much time talking about that, but there's a lot of ways <laughs> to uh, incentivize the community through monetization cool. using the blockchain as well. Cool. So you got, uh, you've kind of encapsulated the heavy metal brand. You've, you've launched this initiative for heavy metal uh, entertainment, the whole catalog. You're doing all this cool technological stuff. Um, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat, man. But let's see, everybody, let's remind everybody, uh, Beyond Kuiper is out now. You can get it. And we have also talked about the upcoming Above the Ground. You guys can check all of those out. And then, of course, we did talk about Fifth Force. And we did talk about Remnant. And, of course, we also talked about Heavy Metal Magazine. Matthew, thanks so much for being on the show. I hope people get a chance to go check your stuff out. And we've Thank got, you so much for hanging out with us. We've got, yeah. your, uh, we've got your social medias up here on the screen. for It's at Matthew Medney at, in, in Instagram and in Twitter. Is there any other place they should look besides HeavyMetal.com? No, the, uh, you could go to MatthewMedney.com as well if you're just okay. interested in my books. Uh, but, you know, everything's also on HeavyMetal.com. Sweet, man. Thank you very much for being on, and we'll uh, follow up with you after. We don't have a very smooth way to end this, so we just hang up on people. <laughs> That's cool, <laughs> <it, laughs> man. <laughs> Thank you Rock so on, much guys. for hanging out with us. We'll see you soon. All right, buddy. Later. Bye. Bye. All right. Let's see if uh, – <laughs> let's jump into the chat here, see if we're missing anything. Uh, let's see. Blockchain. Yeah, Daniel Baker, yes, the blockchain – can and will protect your naked pictures of Ernest Borgnine. Sirs and ma'am. Mine are all printed in, in a safe deposit box, and you cannot have them no matter how many times you ask me if you can have them. You just can't have them. We got a crypto update, bitches. It's a crypto update. And you may notice that by what the what the woman of the house here is uh, showing, we got a little champagne. Because, and you guys know as uh, uh, Sigler junkies... What it means, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to have champagne. Uh, hey, Mike, yeah, I don't understand. The book is sent off to the uh, publisher, the final draft sent off the publisher, as of, I'm going to guess, 1045 ish last night, somewhere about in that ballpark. That, a little bit, a little bit. Later Had a big old 15 hour day, finish it off. It was a little bit shout out, but shot out, but it's 146,000 words. And it was supposed to be 90. So I'm burning. Company money left and right because I I can't I can't sh I can't sh I got I don't have good shrinkage I need shrinkage, so we're very thrilled. But tonight we're celebrating. Congratulations! We're celebrating. That was a hard fought win. Hard fought win. Yep. And uh, that has nothing to do with anybody but him. He beat himself up more about in the last three weeks about this book than I've ever seen him beat himself up about anything yeah. else. It's, so it, congratulations it, to you. It maybe sure. is an awesome book and maybe is a giant stinky pile of poo. I'm not entirely sure. I need some separation from it. Um, but but it's done. And I don't think books two through five will be nearly as big. No, and you know, you see that all the time. You see the world building and stuff like that. I think, you know, I'm there's a, a very good example, which is um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which is, of course, quite girthy. Uh, starts where where they're explaining the community and then the two towers for me when I read it um, was quite a slog because it's the nation building part and I have to learn about everything and I was young when I first read it because it's my mom's favorite book so she read my brother and I what she what you know what the Princess Bride called the good parts version uh, and then I wanted to read it all the way through I was probably in my 20s and I was like and it was because she was skipping all the nation building parts uh, because those are tedious and hard to get through. But to be able to enjoy where it ends as a fully fledged adult, you need that. You need to understand why it matters to pull the ends in, to do all those things like that. So I think that this book, 
from what I've seen, and I have seen the sort of the where we're moving in the future, and I've seen this book, of course, I think there's a lot of nation building in this book, which is required so that you understand the field at play, because we don't have it right now. We don't have a space like this right in our current world. Um, and so I do also think that the books two through six, hopefully. Two through five, two through five, two Jesus through five. Christ, don't kill me. <laughs> Jesus. Isn't it six books? <laughs> no, it's five. Okay. God damn it. And, and listen, all you, it's five fucking books. It's not going to become seven. It's not going to become eight. Unless, unless the selling of said book gives me financial indigestion that makes me poop money. Now that's going on. There, <laughs> there, there could be, there could be some extra books. I might go to the buffet. Two of five thousand. <laughs> No Timothy is not nine bucks. No Sean Dyer, who oh. people at Heavy Metal seem to know. It's not <laughs> it's not five thousand and all uh, y'all. You know, Robin Taylor knows him too, she said in the chat. Hey, you know what? Yeah, we know him too. We're very we're very fancy. We're very fancy. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh that is it. That is the big news there. We still got some fun stuff to go over. Let's go to so, uh, uh, books. For, for for many of you, is there anything wrong with my mic? I can't seem to hear in my own headphones. Um you may have uh, unplugged them by mistake. Oh, that's okay. I can okay. wait. As long I, as you can I, wait. Yeah. You sound great. Okay, great. You look great. Uh, you sound thanks. great. Mm-hmm. I am great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so in case any of you are going to ask, and I think some of you are probably going to ask, we don't know. We cannot tell you when the release date is, what happens from here, because this is a book that we sold to Athon. Or, uh, yeah, Athon. So Athon now, it, it's there's been a handoff, and they're going to take it. They're so good at their job. So I, I do know that it won't be in 2022. Full stop, 100%. Won't be in 2022. Um, I do also think it will be in 2023, and I do believe it'll be in the first half. But I have no, we have no authority over that. I'm speaking off the top of my head or out of my butt, whichever you prefer. Don't count on that. But um, they are just as excited as we are that that it's been handed off and it's and he's chat, moving on to the next uh, to the next book. So uh, soon, hopefully, we got, we'll, we'll have get to some this more question. Info. We'll do this question right now. Um, Will we be able, will you be able to get signed copies? Odds are there's going to be a hardcover run and a Mysterious Galaxy in San Diego will store them. And I'm sure they'll be available on Amazon. But Mysterious Galaxy would be the place you have to order to get the signed copies. Mm-hmm. So we don't have details on that as a brand new publisher. We don't know what they're, exactly what they're going to do. They seem pretty sharp. So we'll get that figured out. And I do know that as we move forward, um, you know, as the whole world moves forward and um, book tours and all that stuff is less likely, especially in the winter months, uh, in whichever hemisphere, uh, we're going to be looking into other options for us to send a book plate, us to send an elaborate book plate, things like that. We're, we'll work on it. But right now, Scott's right. Um, this is a traditionally published book. And uh, we'll do the same thing that we did where you for Phalanx, where you order directly through uh, Mysterious Galaxy and we head down there and sign, he signs books. All right, we're going to go take a look at books right now. And oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Give me a second, you guys. Hey, talk to the people while I see uh, if I can fix so, this goddamn So uh, I do have a, a little tiny uh, bit of news, which is completely irrelevant to everything else, which is last night when Scott was finishing his book until midnight, I put up our Christmas tree. Yeah. It's a little bit early. And I know Dan- Dr. Daniel Baker, PhD, his gorgeous and amazing wife will uh, condemn that because she is not, she's a after Thanksgiving kind of a gal. Uh, but I was sitting by myself and had already made like food for the week and done my meal prep and stuff. And so I was like, gonna do it. Gonna do it. Put up the Christmas tree. Gonna do it. Yeah. All right, let's go to books. I got some fun news for you guys. I wanted to show you uh, this. Hold on. Keep talking, babe. <laughs> I screwed this <laughs> uh, up again. Don't know what else. We'll say. just oh, stretch this I out here. I will say, I'll share a picture uh, later. I don't, oh, maybe I can do it here. Um, Scott's birthday is at the, is actually, you guys are going to be celebrating Scott's birthday with us two weeks from now, Sigler in Place on uh, November 30th. November 30th is Scott's birthday. So we're going to uh, have a little bit of a birthday celebration there. Are you done? Yeah, this is oh. uh, this is what you see when you go to heavymetal.com. And of course, it could not be more fucking metal when you go to heavymetal.com <laughs> and all this stuff is going on. So this is the super cool stuff that Matthew and his crew are up to. And then you can uh, you can just click in for the regular one or I'm not touching the blockchain because I don't I don't trust it. I, I don't trust it at all. I think it's uh, I think it's black magic and the devil's work. But we have other news information. 
news information. Earth core <laughs> reviews continue to crank along. 12,170, you're all fantastic, but yeah, this is what I was very surprised by. I haven't checked this in a while. Mount Fitzroy reviews at Audible, 3,981. I mean, it seemed like only yesterday that we were smooching your fine posteriors because we got to 3,000 reviews. Yep. Little did we know that you whippersnappers were going to grab yourself by the bootstraps and other bodily parts and drag your way up to almost 4,000 reviews. So if you are an Audible customer, two things. If you haven't reviewed Mount Fitzroy, do so. Give it a big, mm -hmm. fat, juicy five-star rating. While you are there, and you can do this whether you've rated it or not, go through and vote helpful on all of the lovely, positive five-star reviews. Jim it's Hathaway, a tiny I little thing. You. It's a tiny thing, but it helps us a lot. And you guys, if you have not done the same thing for EarthCore, you can do that because there are a lot of people who don't like the fact that I swear in EarthCore. So you go through all these helpful five-star ones and you click helpful. <coughs> drives it up to the top. It's very great. Over at scottsigler.com, we are in episode thanks, <coughs> 25 of The Rookie. Uh, gosh, Steve, are you in the, if you're in the chat room, tell me how many episodes are left. I think two? Just two, yeah. yeah. I think our, so I think, uh, Steve, do tell us, but I think that uh, <coughs> Excuse we've me. won this Sunday, we won next Sunday, and we are not going to be on Sigler in Place next week, but that means that when we do Sigler in Place on the 30th, we're going to be celebrating Scott's birthday. Mm -hmm. And doing the live Q and A that will eventually go to his YouTube feed. It'll also be the Sunday Q and A episode, <coughs> that sort me. of thing. Uh, so, if you have questions for sig for uh, about anything, but especially about the rookie remaster or anything else, go to info at mtset.com. Send us info at mtset.com questions about anything. I will tell you, uh, I, I'm sure Scott has been talking about this in the talkie talk, but I don't hear the talkie talk until I listen on Sundays. And I don't always listen on Sundays because I've heard this story. Um, so <laughs> several of you have sent in questions and just you didn't say that they were for the Q&A. You just said question. And I've answered you. Uh, Jason, I think you're in the chat room tonight. We had a nice combo about that. And so if I've recently answered a question that you sent in without specifying that it was for the rookie Q&A, I've gone back through and put those in the rookie Q&A because I now realize that that was probably what that was for. <laughs> Fabulous. So, again, that'll be November 30th, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time. That is going to be the rookie adult version Q&A episode. Those things are a riot. We have a blast. I get asked all the questions live. I would love for you guys to be there. Come get yourself a beverage. Come hang out. And then, of course, we strip that audio out and put it in the live feed. So there you go. We're not doing video questions this time or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, we're not. Just, because... ta just email your questions in and uh, and I'll answer them. I might get mad at you, but I'll still answer them. And part of the reason that we're not doing video this time, so if you are a video person or you wanted to be a video <laughs> person, keep it in mind for the next time, is that this is a new format where we're going to do it live in this arena. And, then, and I want him to... He has to do the setup for a video question, so he hears it in advance, and then the, it's a predetermined or you know, it's a pre-thought answer, and we don't like that. So we're not going to do it this time. We may do it next time, but since we're going to strip this out and it'll be a podcast, it'll be on the YouTube channel as a video, all that sort of stuff. We're not going to do it for this. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, let's see. Now we have uh, as much as fourteen minutes left. Do oh, you have yeah. pup dates? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course have, I do. Do you have uh, empty set pup dates? I do have empty oh, set nice. pup dates. We've got some happy pup dates and then a sad pup date, but we're going to show it to you anyways. Yeah. Uh, let's see. First of all, let's get rid of the poop shoe and the big pup pick. Pup, boop. There's a oh, that's there's Reese a happy hot dog. A little bit hot. This is her quote unquote smiling because she's hot, and in a second she'll get overheated and have to pant a lot. She goes into this <laughs> these cushy beds that are fur fur lined. Not real fur. Yeah, yeah. they're not. We but put our cozy. dogs in beds lined with dog fur. That's how fucking metal we are, you guys. And she gets in there and she she gets antsy she at the other dogs it. and she gets in there and then like. Ten minutes later, just just having a tough time. But and it our... has finally cooled off enough in San Diego that she's right down there uh, in a fuzzy dog bed, snoring away. It's great. And her big pup pick is super cute. Hey, oh, it's a super close up of Squeaks. That's super close up of Squeaks. She Mickey's. she looks like she's going through uh, uh like her trip through warp space did not go well, and it is stretching, pulling her from sure. the fabric. She's absolutely she's, spaghetti She is spaghetti fine. All right. Now we have a quick dog. one for Pup Show. Babe, tell them what's up. Okay, so you guys, this is, uh, I know this is a long shot, but we are all about a long shot at Empty Set Entertainment. And our uh, friend Nan Bailey, uh-oh, there it is. Hang on one sec. What's happening? Why won't it come up? I don't know. You need the email to come up? No, that's it. Hang on one sec. That's all I need. There you go. Um... 
Uh, Nan Bailey, who is probably watching tonight, she's a junkie, uh, wrote in and said, Hi, I'm in Ontario, Canada, and I'm asking for help. My dog wandered off on Canadian Thanksgiving Day, which is November 13th, in case you don't know, and has been, hasn't been seen since. I've registered in multiple places and done all of the recommended things. Now it's Hail Mary pastime. Could you please share this information? She sent an email and asked us. Uh, the area that I live in is cottage country, and uh, the 13th was the last day of standard closing up the weekend. If anybody picked him up and carried him home, it would help to spread the word as far as we can. Thank you for any help you can provide, and just uh, for listening if you can't share. Of course we would share, Nan. We are big dog people. Hagrid looks like a lovely, lovely boy. Yep. And I will also say... Um, she also added a Facebook post or some sort of social post that she made. I'm going to read it from November 13th. I went for a walk tonight. Many of you will know that this is not unusual. What was unusual is I didn't have to worry about working on my second job, so I had options about which route I would take. Um, uh, usually when Hagrid would determine when I walked. If it was cold weather, we would walk from job one before I got to job two. If it was warm, um, I would we would walk after a job two. Hagrid decided the route, the pace, the distance, and I hadn't realized how many of my decisions were centered around him. I'm lost without him in more oh, ways than oof. I would imagine. And any of you guys who have a pet that you love, a dog, a cat, a bird, I don't care if they can move out of their, you know, say fish tank. I'm not terribly worried about that but you know what it's like to lose a pet and you know what it's like to uh have a pet sort hey, of Josh. escape or get away so if you guys know anybody in Inter ontario and you can ping hip them to this that kind of thing i'm sure this is on nan's facebook page um we know it's a long shot it's, they a, long know shot. it's a long shot but i've i've lost case. dogs and it's been a long shot to get them back and, and have got them back so yeah and uh, hopefully if you're in that area or know people in that area see if you can rally around and go throw a little little help in the mix and today in this show we were chatting with matt when he said, Matt Medney, when he said, yeah, Sean Dyer's a good friend of mine. So anything can happen. Anything I would have expected happen. that too. So there you go. It's not the happiest, but hopefully Hagrid gets a, a little bit of a shout and out And then somehow. here's more fun. We, uh, You guys were asking, are there such things as Kraken's cheerleaders? Or why aren't there Kraken's and cheerleaders in the books? They're not in the books because that's just more stuff to put in. And personally, cheerleaders of a football game, uh, pretty much since I graduated high school, it's not necessary for the game. It's not part of the pure, pureness of the game. <laughs> so no, I'm not putting them in my book. But if you look here, we actually do have mm -hmm. cheerleaders. So this is, I can't remember which Sigler Fest this is. I think it might it's be 2017 early one. Yeah, because we, we don't have a date on it. So but it's we're like the definitely in, 16, in Las Vegas. So however old that is. And you can see we've got a handful of cheerleaders in the back. Um, on the left side of your screen, that is Lisa Tryon. And on the uh, holding the pom poms, and on the right side of your screen, that is Beth Copenhaver. We Both, get some more uh, pics in, here. Yeah, so this is Beth Copenhaver actually back rocking in 2015. Yeah. Rocking it, and in those boots. Come on now. I like uh, the orange fishnets myself. The, the combo's fantastic. Yes. In 2015, this was actually a Dragon Con in Atlanta, and this is how she cosplayed that day. And I, this is. Perfect. It was great. So, I, I didn't know this was happening. We had we had a couple of uh, Kraken's cheerleaders show up, and it was just fantastic. And then there you and go. And this is back at Sigler Fest. This is uh, um, this is my uh, good friend Jerry McArdle on the left mm -hmm. as a cheerleader, also in uh, the fishnets, and of course Lisa Tryon again, a second year as cheerleader there too. Uh, so if you guys uh, two weeks ago when we were talking about the GFL, we were talking about cheerleaders. Somebody asked a question about why no cheerleaders. We do have cheerleaders. They're just not going to make it into the book. <laughs> And like I said earlier in the show, if you guys sent in other photos, we're going to, because we didn't want to have to cut them for time and then forget about them, we're going to do, uh, we wrote the script yesterday, anything that got sent in today or after around noon yesterday, we'll put in on Scottsburg. I would also like to point out, if you look closely at this picture I mentioned earlier, if there is such a situation where I create a fictional property that is, uh, you know, gastrointestinal finance that results in pooping out money, I'm looks like I'm pooping out gold right here. Like I've got some... It's a very bright light coming out of my posterior. I'm not sure what John was replying to, but John Bivens just said, nope. <laughs> <laughs> right when you said, I'm pooping out gold, he went, nope. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, my butt is apparently made of very bright gold. You know what it is? My butt is what was in the briefcase in Pulp Fiction. It's the same thing. Look at this. There's so, proof. So this many information. Proof. So many information. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we've got a few minutes left. We're going to go to some questions. We've got some questions. So I will say, Any you questions guys. from the lady in the ball cap? Any questions? You got some questions. Baby, bring me questions right now. I will in a moment, but first I'm going to say, if you guys want to participate in celebrating Scott's birthday two weeks from now, you can send 
an email. This is the only time I'm going to say this. Normally, I'm going to point you up here, but you can send something to asigler at emptyset.com, and I will read it. He won't see it until that day live on the air. You can send a little bit of a video. It absolutely must be heart, uh, vertical, Yep. right? Vertical and less than 30 seconds. For the question. Absolute, or for the birthday, whatever you want to send. Hopefully, it's a question, too. But vertical in less than 30 seconds. If you want to send something in two weeks before <clears throat> the birthday celebration for Scott, two weeks from now, you can absolutely do that. I'm not going to edit anything. So if it's a second longer than 30 seconds, I'm not You're ready. ready. I'm just reading. You're ready. <laughs> but if you want to do that, great. I would love to have that. Um, we've done a, You guys and I, as junkies, have done a yes, handful Daniel, of very fun things. Um, in, I think, 2011, we made like a comic book video thing it was super fun so if you want to do that go ahead and do that Dan Glam, that, actually um already talking to matthew Medney at heavy metal about doing something there and i can't i'm not gonna talk about what it is yet it was a graphic novel tied to one of my existing properties not the gfl but we might do that too i don't know and uh they are very interested they want the stuff they put out they want part ownership of the ip so they can put in that whole heavy metal universe like the marvel universe and because it's something I already published with another publisher, that kind of confused things. But I'll follow up with Matthew on that, and uh, and we will see. I will say it was going to be very, very bloody, though. What questions we got, Pumpkin? Um, so Oops, I left that uh, info uh, set up the whole time, didn't I? That's yeah. okay. That's okay. That'll work, too. But um, So I don't think we have. So Sean Dyer asked question, why is Quentin's regrown tooth always so fragile? I think it's just luck. It's just the, the luck of the draw. He just, no matter what happens, he keeps getting popped in that same same spot but even a you know regrown tooth it's probably not gonna be as strong as the original tooth i don't know it's a good question though i think it's, uh, a, it's luck of the draw and it's comedic effect is what it's for uh tracy shank asked should i send zebra cakes and the answer to that is please no no <laughs> especially since our took a long post time to get the shut, last box our local sh post office shut down and now to go to our <clears throat> safe deposit box not safe deposit what is it called? P.O. Box. I have to, uh, it's a long, it's further away while they repair our broken down post office. Which is more time for the zebra cakes to become stale. Yeah. All right, baby, hit me next um, question. Kim Hansen sent in a while back, sent in a zillion great questions. So All I'm right. going to read a couple of those. Um, how many drafts do your books generally go through before publication? Right now, I would say it's three to three and a half. Um, it really depends. If it's a book, like it's a GFL book, that's much closer to completion when I finish it than would be for the Shakedown book I just did. But Shakedown was like one rough draft, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, that did not go to the publisher. Asked the publisher, they sort of wanted to be on the ground floor of it, so to speak, and like, no, we want it a little more flesh out. So we did that, we gave them a second draft, got that back. The third draft is the final draft I have just sent out, and then I will get very minor pass at it coming uh, after this. Which will be is because Kayleen, the editor, has just so much stuff to get through. There's probably going to be a lot of questions and like, you missed this, you changed this, but didn't change it over here. So I'll count that as sort of a half draft. And then it's just the grammatical edit and the pagination. So three, three and three and a half. One, two, three. Uh, Rob Otto asks, why did Quentin stop doing the bat -a bat on his center's ass? Uh, it's a good question. I think he just got a little bit, little bit cocky. We've also leaned a little less cocky, excuse me. We've leaned off the football a little bit um, in the past couple of books, and I think he's also he's kind of growing up. You know, that started out he was 19 years old, very cocky, uh, thought of himself on top of the world. Got into the GFL, got him, got punched right in the mouth. Right in the mouth, you get punched when you show up for the pros. And then the rook learned the learned the ways of things, learned the ropes, moved in. And then he still had a lot of that cockiness going in his first couple of years. But you know, sometimes you know you win a couple of uh, put a couple of rings on the finger, and the childish things get put away because you got to go on and be the man. That, that's my answer, Robbie. So who should know? Because Robbie is the man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Man. So this question is off the top of your head and not a terribly in-depth review. Okay. What is the hardest scene you think, when I say what is the hardest scene you've ever written, what is the th scene you think about right now? But, 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 the hardest scene I've ever written, that's a really good question. I think the hardest thing I've ever written is way back when I did a blog post when uh, Mookie passed on. And that was just a blubbering mess writing that, you guys. It was so bad. Um, 
Mookie the Violent. I Mookie remember the that Violent. podcast or that uh, post. Yeah, that post was. I, we're keeping that one. That's one of the few we kept yeah. when we moved the, the website over. The hardest scene, uh, I, I think the Perry scene in Contagious was uh, really tough because uh, that was, you know, that 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 character was the ascent of my career and my entree into being able to do this, live my dream job and write full time. And he was also a Michigan boy and some of the, some of the, the stuff he went through, what he had to overcome to get to that scene in Contagious was an awful lot. Uh, so that. I kind of identified with him a lot for that that last scene. It's probably that's probably the hardest one. There's some stuff coming up in seven, uh, GFL book seven. That's real, real hard, real, real hard. Um, can you think of any, babe? You know, I was going to say there's a couple of things that I that obviously I haven't written, but as a reader, <clears throat> it was very, very hard for me to read the dream sequences that uh, Margot had in Pandemic. Um, and I won't spoil who who she had it uh, in case you've not read those books, but I think most of you have. That was very hard. It was really heartbreaking because her job as uh, her job was to save everyone, and she speaks to somebody who's no longer on Earth, and that's very that was very hard for me. But I'll also say this: um, uh, you were talking about the scene where it, uh, in Contagious, and that um, I am. You, some of you guys out there know this. Um, I am reading through for the first time the novel Dune right now. And I've tried it three other times in my life, and I was too cocky and stupid to actually get through the first chapter. But one of the things that I'm finding, and this is not a terribly big spoiler, is that the hero of Dune is not necessarily a self-made hero. And the things that he has to go through are not necessarily things that he chooses himself to go through. And I feel a lot of sympathy for Perry because that same thing is happening to him. And I didn't see that the first, I didn't see that when I read it. It was terribly tragic and Perry goes through a lot. But the idea that you can just be living your life, doing your thing, and all of a sudden you're at the center of a, you know, a global <clears throat> impact, that I think is very moving. And so it moved me again. Got some uh, lightning round questions here. Uh, when are we getting an infected movie? Alfonso asks, I don't know. We've worked on that for a while. We'll continue to work on it. I still have, I have hopes that that'll get done before I croak. Because it's a, it's in a very four, most 75% of that movie is in one dude's apartment. That's a, that's a hell of a bargain if you're writing a horror movie. So got to get that back going again. Um, horror right. historian says. I'll say it. Uh, uh, I have both versions of Ancestor. Do you have a favorite version? And was it hard making the changes needed between the two? It wasn't really hard because it was very exciting. I was still working with uh, Julian Pavia, uh, Pavia, excuse me, at uh, at Random House Crown, and he was great. Did the first five books, and it was a pleasure to work with him. The the big thing was he made me take out the self cutting for uh, Magnus Paglione, mm -hmm. and it's like this is he's like this is too unrealistic. I'm like, dude, people actually do this shit. <laughs> they actually they're they're called cutters. It's an actual thing, and there was some. Some more intricate scenes with that that I th I thought made that I thought really set the character off quite nicely, um, and those got cut. So I was I was bummed about those. But the the two versions, while different, uh, I'm happy with the final. Pretty happy with the final version. And I think you know <clears throat> Scott has rewritten a handful of his books, and um, you know I wonder if that's such a it's a gift. Certainly as a reader, it's a gift for me. Um, but I wonder is it a gift for you to purposefully get to revisit and get paid to improve a story as you are a better writer uh, or a more well-versed writer yeah if you're getting if you're getting paid and you get a chance to make it better uh that's great but you know a, a lot of us who grew up on star wars have seen the better version so you know that is completely in the eye of the creator but i'd rather i'd rather be writing more stuff yeah so sean dyer also asks are quith leaders humans with dwarfism and male sclerno the only sentience small enough to be viable in dynalition i believe lee key could probably pull that off and uh the in Kretorakians. not all Kretorakians are not all in the military as you guys know from way back reading the rookie and the starter We've not seen too much of Kretorakian civilians, but we will see them again in upcoming books. So we have one last question, I think, from <clears throat> David Lamb, if you scroll down a little bit. Uh, there it is. Is Perry Dossie based on any real-life yeah. characters that Scott knew back in the day in Michigan? Yeah, he is. We had we had some guys we played, Danny Baker and I played football with um, our junior year and our senior year that uh, these guys had just horrible home lives, horrible home lives. And we're getting slapped around by their pops, you know, kind of on the regular. 
And um, those guys were just tough as shit. And that, and that, I was fascinated to play with that concept of, you know, if if certain awful alien invasiony things happened in our hometown, I know a lot of people in that situation who would probably just curl up and give up because they've never encountered any kind of adversity of that caliber. Whereas these guys that we played football with and went to class with, I'm like, yeah, those those dudes would absolutely survive because their their ability. I don't know if it's pain tolerance. Pain, high pain tolerance means you don't really feel pain when other people do feel pain. This is different. This is pain endurance. Uh, the same thing happens to them, happens to you. You both feel the same amount of pain. They're just used to it. They're used to it, and they know how to process it. They know how to deal with it, and they know how to take things on in that regard. So, uh, yeah, Infected was very much based on on some guys I played football with. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Any other last second questions? Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't think you can answer Rob's question, can you? Uh, sure, I can. Rob okay. Otto asks, what species are the uh, the rocked by in the GFL timeline? They are the Portath. The Portath and the rocked by are von uns the same. And Shannon Bethany uh, in the Facebook chat said, uh, would the Hara be able to play Dynalition? And I actually thought that as soon as I read that question out loud. But I think while they are small enough, and, and you tell me. Cheat. Uh, yeah. cheat with the flying the cheaters. Well, but can they be strapped into a, a dino? They, they're, the way their body is constructed, they would just get obliterated. You can't put armor. I mean, no, I don't think they could. I don't think they could. You know they're, those little like cat bubbles? Could you put them in a cat bubble? That's basically how their fighter craft work, right? Their 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 fighter craft, and we haven't gotten into it yet. Again, you'll see this in future books. The Hurrah are are the all they're the top gun of the GFO universe. They because they fly, so they naturally react to things. Their cockpit is a big ball, hollow sphere that jets air at them. So they're actually just they're just flying inside their cockpit, and then when bl- air you know if it air blows on them this way and they turn, then the the air jets reorient themselves. So they're always flying into a, a headwind and then the ship computer reads what their actions are and makes the ship react in real time. So if they're looking at in the inside of the ball is also all holographic. So they, the pilots feel like they are actually flying out in space. And if they turn this way, then the ship matches that exactly. So they're natural flyers as opposed to taught flyers their reaction time is much higher than all the other species. So yes, hurrah, are in a cat ball, but they can't and they are hold very the deadly. Lance. What's that? So for dynolition, they can't hold Correct. the lance. So yeah, that well, would be they, difficult. They they can hold. They they can use mouth flaps. They can hold weapons. It's just they are hollow and cartilaginous, and if they get squashed by the right thing, you know how do you put armor around a thing that flies? Yeah, exa- yeah exactly. So their, but their bodies the are just thing, not yeah. suited. Their bodies are just not suited to the sport whatsoever. So I think that is it for today. We're a little bit yes, past Yes, Jennifer seven. Hawthorne, they have big balls. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they so do. So we owe oh, two things. Okay, so we're going to sign off here in a minute. But uh, Robin Taylor or any other person with a cat, if you have a cat like backpack with the you know the little ball or the just the helmet so you can clip their nails, I need to see a picture. I need to see a picture and share it with everybody. But uh, other than that, we are done for this week. Um, we are obviously doing uh, the Rookie Q&A two weeks from now. That is the most important part of two weeks from now. If you have questions about the Rookie or anything else in the GFL, anything else in the Sigler Vosh, or anything else Scott Sigler, please go ahead and send that to info at empty set. If you would like to spend, send a specific short birthday wish to Scott for that same episode, you can email asigler at empty set.com. I'm not going to put that on the screen because they don't like that on the Facebook. Um, so if you want to do that, go ahead and do that. Um, it needs to be in no later than the Tuesday before, so the 29th Thanks, of, Brock, of November. And uh, we'll be back on the 30th. The 30th, we are doing Hello, Nico. our Q&A. <clears throat> and uh, we are also celebrating Scott's birthday. Yes. So we're yeah. going to have a little bit of uh, celebratory cake. Maybe he'll open one present. Uh, Who knows? Nico Devious just showed up for the last yeah, 20 seconds. We're in. happy to have you. <laughs> happy to have you. So until then, we want you to stay smart. And we need you to stay science. It's getting winter time in the northern hemisphere. Yep. And there's a whole new thing coming around. So read the news, listen to actual doctors, do all that stuff. And for the love of science, stay informed, you guys. Stay informed. You guys, if you are in the United States, have a very happy Thanksgiving. We will see you back on the 30th of November. Until then, you guys, you know what you can do. <laughs> We're going to go enjoy our Thanksgiving. We hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving. 
uh, you know, uh, give, give your mom a smooch on the cheek for me. You know what I'm talking about. And uh, we will, uh, you know, kiss off on this guy. Basically, that's all you're going to do. Ready? Mm-hmm. Um, ah!